So, uh, today we are going to study how symmetry is used in quantum mechanics. Okay. In order to do this, uh, first we will revise some of the basic postulates of quantum mechanics and uh, this will set us up for uh, using symmetry arguments. Okay. So, uh, if you recall the basic postulates of quantum mechanics, okay, it says that the state of the system is described by the state of the system is described by an object called the wave function okay wave function and it's denoted by psi okay so psi is called the wave function so so the state of the system is denoted by a wave function okay and this is a function of the coordinates of all the particles okay then you know that the that uh, an obs observable a physical observable corresponds to an operator ok. So, so corresponding to every physical observable there exists an operator ok. Now, there are certain important features of this operator and this is what uh, I want to focus on. Now, uh, let us consider consider energy energy observable ok. So, the operator is called the Hamiltonian operator ok. So, corresponding to the energy observable there is an operator called the Hamiltonian operator. Okay. Now, an operator if you if you remember operator acts on a on a wave function ok, it, it acts on a wave function to give you some other wave function. So, psi prime of r and I would not write the r coordinate, I will just say it acts on psi to give you psi prime. Okay, so, an operator acts on a wave function to give you another wave function ok. So, uh, now there are certain so certain functions called eigenfunctions. So, there are certain functions which are called as eigenfunctions. So, and these satisfy Hamiltonian operator operating on an eigenfunction. So, this is the nth eigenfunction. Function of Hamiltonian operator. So, it is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian operator. So, psi n is is the eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian operator. So, if if it satisfies h times psi n is equal to E n times psi n where E n is a scalar. So, it is just a number ok. So, it is just a number ok. This is a function and this is a number ok. So, this is called the eigenvalue equation and now uh, so, it is possible that you can have degeneracies So, when we have degeneracies, degeneracies then we say that uh, h times psi n 1 is equal to E n times psi n 1 ok and you have uh, h times psi n 2 is equal to E n times psi n 2 and so on up to h times h times psi n k is equal to E n times psi n k. So, then you say that uh, E n is k fold 
degenerate state okay so all these eigen functions psi n1 psi n2 psi n3 up to psi nk they all have the same eigen value en so they have the same eigen value en okay and and since there are k of them you say en is k fold degenerate state okay now uh, according to the postulates of quantum mechanics corresponding to every observable and uh, let's take the example of the energy observable okay so the according to the postulates of qu quantum mechanics so eigen values are real okay so corresponding to a physical observable your operator is hermitian so the eigen values are real okay and eigen functions can be chosen orthogonal okay so so i'll just expand this a bit so so your eigen values for any hermitian operator they have to be real eigen values the eigen functions okay they can be chosen to be orthogonal now i'm using the word can be chosen okay that is to emphasize that uh, if if we have distinct eigen values okay then eigen functions are orthogonal okay so so if you have if if your eigen values so if you have two different eigen values the corresponding eigen functions will be orthogonal okay so that is the first part now the second part is if we have degenerate degenerate states we can have them to be orthogonal okay so so in such a case where uh, where all the all the all these eigen functions have the same eigen value en okay you can choose different ones to be orthogonal okay now why do i say you can choose them to be orthogonal is uh, it's fairly easy to see the suppose uh, suppose psi 1 psi psi n1 and psi n2 are eigen functions with eigen value en okay so psi n and psi 2 are two different eigen functions their eigen value is they have they have the same eigen value en okay now uh, the first thing is that uh, clearly a times psi n1 okay so if i multiply psi n by a where a is a scalar okay so so in any case if i take uh, a times psi n it will have the same it will be an eigen function of h with eigen value en okay so is an eigen function function with eigen value en okay this is very easy to see so so uh, you can see this by saying that h times h operated on a psi psi n1 okay now uh, the hermitian operator is a linear operator so h operated on a ti a times psi n is a times h operated on psi n okay 
n 1 and this is equal to a times e n psi n 1 is equal to e n times a psi n 1. Okay. So, the Hamiltonian operated on a times psi n 1 is nothing but e n times a psi n 1. So, therefore, a times psi n 1 is an eigenvalue with the same eigen uh, is an eigenfunction with the same eigenvalue. Okay. Moreover, you can easily show that if I take any combination of these functions, I will also get an eigenfunction. So, suppose I take uh, psi is equal to c 1 psi n 1 plus c 2 psi n 2. Okay. Now, it is important that both these have the same eigenvalue. So, psi n 1 and psi n 2 have the same eigenvalue. Okay. Then this implies h times psi is equal to e n 1 times psi. Okay. So, so the point is you can take a linear combination and you can extend this from 2 to many more uh, Eigen functions okay. and, this, and this sort of relation will hold that if you had a set of Eigen functions with the same Eigen value. So, they should have they should have the same Eigen value E n. Okay. They should not have distinct Eigen values. If they have distinct Eigen values they are orthogonal. If they are the same okay, then any linear combination of them Okay, is also an eigenfunction with the same eigenvalue. Okay, so uh, then then the question is how can we, how can we get eigenfunctions? How can we get uh, eigenfunctions that are orthogonal? And you can use an orthogonalization procedure. So uh, we can always construct linear combinations. of psi n case that are orthogonal to each other. Okay. So, this is one of the postulates of quantum mechanics that, that uh, if, if you have uh, if you look at eigenfunctions of any any uh, uh, any Hermitian operator, if the if if you look at eigenvalues that are distinct, then the eigenfunctions will always be orthogonal. If you look at uh, the degenerate case, okay, where you have a whole range of eigenvalues, uh, a whole range of eigenfunctions to choose, okay, in that case, then then you can always select such eigenfunctions that are orthogonal to each other, okay. So this is a very important point, okay, and this is one of the one of the central postulates of quantum mechanics. Okay. Then, uh, so, uh, so, so orthogonal eigenfunctions okay. So, this is, so, so the net, net result is that your, uh, your eigenfunctions for a Hermitian ho ho operator are orthogonal. And uh, when you when you see the phrase orthogonal eigenfunctions, you should immediately think of basis. Okay. So 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 if you have a set of functions that are orthogonal, you can use them as a basis. You can use them as a basis, and you can represent any function as a linear combination of these of these orthogonal eigenfunctions. Okay. So suppose we have. the functions are denoted by by psi 1 psi 2 up to psi m okay so these are the orthogonal eigen functions any state psi can be expressed as as psi is equal to sum over i ci psi i. 
So, any state can be expressed as a linear combination of these of these basis functions. Okay. So, this is the meaning of, of a basis and so and so your uh, your Eigen of the of the Hamiltonian operator can be used as a basis for representing any wave function. Okay. So, so this is something that we are going to use in the in the in the treatment of uh, in the in the treatment of symmetry. Next, uh, next let us talk about uh, operators that commute. Okay. So, so what we are going to show is that uh, if two operators they commute with each other, then they can have can have all eigenfunctions as common eigenfunctions. All eigenfunctions common. Okay. This is this is another important idea that if two operators commute with each other, then we can choose their eigenfunctions as common eigenfunctions. So so we already saw that you could choose them to be orthogonal a, any one operator. Okay. But if you have two operators that commute, then all their eigenfunctions can be chosen as common eigenfunctions. So if we have operator one, if operator one times operator two is equal to operator 2 times operator 1. Okay. Then we can have have a common set of eigenfunctions. So, I will say psi 1, psi 2 up to psi m okay, such that O 1 psi 1 is equal to lambda 1 psi 1 and operator 2 psi 2 is equal to lambda 2 psi 2. Okay. So, so you can choose a set of eigenfunctions that are common to both the operators. Okay. So, this is the other other important idea. Now, uh, typically, if you remember, you chose uh, when you were in the in let's say the hydrogen atom problem, you looked at operators that commuted with the Hamiltonian operator. Okay, and we said that you can have a common eigenfunction. Those operators, in the case of hydrogen atom, were the square angular momentum and the z component of the angular momentum. Okay, so we said that uh, so we said that uh, the you can have a common eigenfunction of both these operators. So I'll just give this example in hydrogen atom. We had h comma l square operator is equal to h comma l z operator equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, so where, where, where this is a commutator, so this is a commutator of h and l square that is h times l square minus l square times h. So, if h l square is equal to l square h if the operators commute then this is 0. Okay. So, this means h commutes with l square, h commutes with l z. Okay. And uh, and we also had L square L z commute with each other, okay, which is a trivial identity. So, what we had is that uh, we had all these all these identities and therefore, we chose chose eigenfunctions common to all of all three operators. Okay. So, the eigenfunctions that are common to all the three operators were chosen then these are your 
1 s 2 s 2 p etcetera ok 2 p and so on. Okay, so, for example, if you take 1 s your uh, I the you had a specific eigen eigen value of energy you had a specific eigen value of L square and you had a specific eigen uh, eigen value of L z ok. So, then then we can choose we can choose our eigen functions to be common eigen functions of all the three operators ok. So, so with this background we can we can start uh, applying our ideas of symmetry that we have learned so far in uh, in in constructing wave functions. So, the uh, so the important point is uh, these these uh, this these linear combinations will be constructed by by using wave functions that obey certain symmetry properties. So, now uh, let us mention one more thing that uh, usually usually uh, our Eigen functions are also normalized ok. So, they are normalized. So, they are normalized means the their uh, their integral integral with with themselves is 0 ok. So, so, so effectively we can write psi i star psi j integral d tau equal to delta i j delta i j is 0 if i not equal to j equal to 1 if i equal to j ok. So, so we use a ortho orthonormal basis. So, we say that the basis is orthonormal ok. So, orthonormal basis ok. So, typically typically we construct our basis so that it is orthonormal ok. We have already seen that you can choose them to be orthogonal and uh, once they are orthogonal it is not hard to normalize each of them. So, if your wave functions are orthonormal then they satisfy this property. Now, uh, now suppose you write a wave function psi as a linear combination as of ortho orthonormal wave function orthonormal functions ok. So, so if psi is normalized ok. If psi is normalized then uh, psi star psi d tau equal to 1 ok. So, this implies integral so, psi star is sum over j a j psi j star times sum over i a i psi i d tau ok. It is important to use to use different indices for both of these because 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 uh, this is a sum of various terms this is also a sum of various terms and when you multiply them together you will get all kinds of cross terms ok and that is best done if you use different indices ok. Now, now you can expand this and you can you can write this as integral I write the sum over sum over j sum over i okay. and uh, I write this as a j star a i times integral psi j star psi i d tau ok. So, this is this has to be equal to 1 ok. So, since your psi was uh, normalized this has to be equal to 1 and this implies. So, so uh, if this is has to be equal to 1 this you already know you already know the value of this because psi because our size are orthonormal this will just this is just delta i j a j star a i delta i j ok. So, now, now if you sum over j ok the only term that will appear is when j is equal to i. So, I can write this as uh, 
I can write this as sum over i a i star a i is equal to 1. Okay, or in other words, you can write uh, sum over i a i absolute value square equal to 1. Okay. So, so the condition that uh, the psi when you expand psi in an orthonormal basis, okay, then the coefficients of the expansion should square up to 1. Okay. So, the sum of squares of the coefficients should be equal to 1. Okay. So, this is this is another uh, another another point that we will be using. So, so if you know if you know uh, so, so all the coefficients are not completely independent of each other. If you know, if you know, uh, if you know all except one of them, you can find the last one. Next, uh, next we want to consider the effect of effect of a symmetry operation. x okay so 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 what you want to say is uh, is that you have your symmetry operation x and you are going to operate this on the wave function okay now how do you uh, our symmetry operations if you remember they correspond to things like rotations about axis or reflections and so on now the question is how do you decide what happens when you when you uh, operate a symmetry operation on a on a wave function okay so uh, this can be represented as an operator x on on the wave function Okay. So, the symmetry operation symmetry operation x has an operator okay, that uh, operator x operator okay, and uh, so corresponding to the symmetry operation there exists an operator x on the wave function. Now, now what can you say about this this x operator and it turns out that you can you can say a few things and uh, we will investigate that. Okay. So, uh, what can you say about this uh, this operator x? So, so uh, first of all, so symmetry operation ok. So, physically what you would expect the symmetry operation to do it will it will move the equivalent atoms ok. So, it tends to tends to permutes permutes equivalent atoms ok. So, so suppose I do uh, suppose I I say psi prime equal to r psi or x psi ok. So, so then your psi prime ok psi prime will look a lot like psi but only thing they, they there will be some permutation of atoms ok. So, some of the atoms will be permuted with each other and the atoms that will be permuted will be equivalent atoms ok. So, only the atoms that are equivalent will be permuted with each other ok and then it becomes. Uh, so, then it is obvious that h times psi prime is equal to e times psi prime where h psi is equal to e psi ok. So, the point is that uh, if you just permute equivalent atoms ok. So, just just uh, changing changing equivalent atoms will not change the energy. So, you will have the same energy as you had in the case where you did not permute the equivalent atoms ok. So, this is an important point uh, it is that it is that permuting equivalent atoms is not going to change the energy. So, so this wave function should have the same eigenvalue same 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 energy E ok. So, in other words uh, 
well, it's h x is equal to x h ok. So, h times psi prime psi prime is x psi ok. So, h times x x times psi ok. So, this is h times x times psi ok and uh, this is this is uh, psi prime psi prime is uh, x psi. So, it is x times h times psi ok. So, uh, so e times psi prime ok that is uh, that is e times x psi ok e times x psi is uh, x time x operated on e psi ok. So, x that that is x times h operated on psi. So, or x comma h equal to 0 ok. So, the so the operator corresponding to to symmetry operation commutes with Hamiltonian. So, the operator corresponding to the symmetry operation that commutes with the Hamiltonian and uh, so so, we are going to use this because uh, this implies that now the Hamiltonian and your symmetry operator they can have common Eigen functions. So, you can choose your wave functions to be those functions ok. So, you can choose your Eigen functions of the Hamiltonian to be specifically those that is that are also Eigen functions of the symmetry operator ok. Now, uh, you can ask yourself what are the Eigen functions of this symmetry operator. Okay. So, the Eigen functions of symmetry operator are typically those are functions that have the symmetry ok. So, so, so the functions should have the symmetry of the molecule ok. So, so if you take your CH 4 molecule then your uh, your Eigen function corresponding to that molecule should have the symmetry of the molecule that means you 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 swap the H s you permute the, the hydrogens ok and your wave function should remain the same and this should be reflected in the wave function for for the methane molecule ok. So, so essentially now 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 we have a procedure in which uh, we say which Eigen functions should should be used to uh, as 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 appropriate Eigen functions for the for the Hamiltonian operator and we say that we will use only those that have the symmetry of the molecule ok. So, so we will choose our Eigen functions to be those that are simultaneous Eigen functions of the Hamiltonian and all the symmetry operations ok and those that are Eigen functions of all the symmetry operations of the group. So, we have seen that the that the Eigen operator they can be chosen to be orthonormal Eigen functions ok. And what this means is that if you have if you have uh, two Eigen functions ok with different Eigen values then the way then the wave functions will be uh, orthogonal. Similarly, if you even if you have a degenerate Eigen values you can choose the wave functions to be orthonormal ok. Now, uh, we also know that uh, that uh, the the symmetry operation symmetry operations ok. So, the symmetry operations of the group they commute with commute with h ok. So, what that means is that if you had a symmetry operation r ok you could represent it by an operator and this operator return of our symmetry operation commutes with the Hamiltonian operator. That means, R h equal to h r. What this means is uh, physically it means that if you if you form a symmetry operation on a molecule if you perform a symmetry operation on a molecule ok. 
then uh, then uh, you don't change the energy levels okay you don't change the energy of that state so if you take a molecule in a certain state and you operate it by a symmetry operation then you don't change the energy of that state okay so you reach another state with the same energy okay so that's what it means and uh, and now uh, so so suppose uh, suppose you take the non degenerate case okay so uh, in the non degenerate case uh, we if if a symmetry operation has to commute with the hamiltonian then we can say that that uh, r h psi i is equal to r operator on e psi i e psi i okay and uh, and 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 this is same as e times r psi i okay so the so the so then what we conclude is that uh, is that r times psi i is equal to plus or minus psi i okay that's the only only choice for for r times psi okay so then the effect of the symmetry operation on the wave function has to be either uh, leaving it as it is or changing the sign of the, of the wave function okay so uh, this is this is something we can immediately see and uh, and uh, this is this is this in fact shows that uh, that if we if we operate on psi on on a wave function by on on psi i by different r different operations each time we will get plus or minus psi i okay so so some operations some operations will give plus psi i some operations will give minus psi i okay so the operations that give plus psi i so chi of r equal to plus 1 if r psi i equal to psi i and chi of r equal to minus 1 if r psi i equal to minus psi i now uh, this uh, this is how we define chi r i chi r and and in fact uh, in fact it's not it's easy to see that chi that this provides a one dimensional representation of the group and since it is a one dimensional representation it has to be irreducible okay so what we have seen seen is that in the non degenerate case okay the effect of effect of operating on the wave function by all the by all the symmetry operations gives you gives you these eigen values which form a one dimensional representation of the group okay now uh, we can we can prove this in more general in general okay so 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 we can generalize this this is the non degenerate case we can generalize it to the degenerate case and uh, and uh, and and other cases so so the symmetry operations acting on on uh, wave functions on eigen functions form an irreducible 
representation of the group. Okay, so so we'll 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 show this shortly. We'll show this shortly. We have already seen in the in the non-degenerate case. We can we can easily see this. In fact, in fact, the way what you would say is that if you had two operations, okay, and then the then the effect of the product of the operations just gives the product of the characters. Okay, so that's what shows that this indeed is a valid representation. Okay, in general, what you can say is that uh, is that if you have the symmetry op uh, operations acting on eigenfunctions, they form an irreducible representation of the group. Uh, Let us take an example, uh, example k fold degenerate states. Okay. So, if you have k fold degenerate states, so, uh, so you have h operated on psi i, psi i j is equal to E i psi i j, j equal to 1, 2 up to k. Okay. So, there are k such equations, okay. all of them have the same eigenvalue E i. Now, uh, now, now you ask yourself what will happen if, uh, if, you, if you operate by one of the symmetry operations on, on psi, uh, psi i j. Okay, psi i j's are orthonormal. orthonormal okay now suppose i suppose i say i operate by r on psi ij okay so suppose i operate by a symmetry operation on on psi ij okay now you know that whatever you get whatever you get has to have the same eigenvalue ei okay so since r commutes with the hamiltonian when it operates on psi ij you will get another wave function which also has the same eigenvalue ei okay and now uh, if you want a, if you want a wave function with eigenvalue ei okay you can just take it as a linear combination of these of all the all these wave functions so so i can write it as sum over psi ij okay and i'll just say r so this is j equal to one. Oh, oh sorry, psi i l. Okay, l equal to one to k. Okay, and then there's a coefficient. Okay, there's a coefficient corresponding to to each l. Okay, so I'll say r l j. So I can just write it this way. So uh, so so I just wrote it as a linear combination of all the all the wave functions. Okay, all these all these basis functions. So it's just a linear combination of those. So so if I choose a wave function like this, then you can clearly see clearly h times r psi i j is equal to e i psi i j okay so so you can easily see this that h times r psi i j is e i times psi i j because uh, each of these each of these eigen functions has the same eigen value e i okay so so the energy energy eigen value is not changed okay and this is the most general uh, representation of this operation and now uh, now and now you instantly see this quantity r l j okay this looks like an element of a matrix Okay, this looks like an element of a matrix. Okay, uh, it'll be a it'll be a k by k k k times k matrix. So this is element of a of a k cross k matrix. Okay, and in fact, in fact, this element is what we'll call a k-dimensional representation of of the operation R. Now, if you had another operation S, okay, such that S times psi i j is equal to sum over sum over L equal to one to k psi i L S L j. 
and you had T operated on psi i j is equal to sum over L equal to 1 to k psi i L T L j. So, if you had something like this, okay. so then, then uh, S i j is a matrix element of the k dimensional representation of psi i of, of S of operation S. Similarly, T L j is a matrix element of the matrix representation of T. Okay. And this so, so, so we can show that uh, R L j S L j T L j are matrix elements elements of k dim k cross k dimensional matrices corresponding to a to a k dimensional representation of the group. Okay. So, so the point point I want to make is that uh, this uh, this is uh, this is a way to get. So, if you have k k fold degenerate states, okay, then uh, you can generate a k dimensional representation of the group using this procedure. Okay. Now, uh, now, now suppose you had suppose we had we had r times s equal to t. Okay. Suppose, suppose uh, the product of these two operations was equal to t. So, so in the group r times s was equal to t, then, uh, then we must have and uh, this is again not hard to work out, but I uh, will just write the answer sum over L equal to 1 to k r i l s l k a a s l j is equal to t i j ok so 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 the matrix corresponding to this operator ok matrix corresponding to t should be a matrix product of these two matrices ok so that's a, so 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 if you had this for operations it should also be true for the matrices in order for the matrices to be a valid representation for the group Okay, and this is this, this is very easy to verify. You can you can you can show this by 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 using these equalities. Okay, so the point we are uh, point uh, I want to make is that uh, is that this is a way to generate a valid representation of this group of this group, and uh, and and what we get is a is a k dimensional representation a representation. Okay, so, so this is a way to generate a k dimensional representation. I uh, will look at a specific example of this of this next. Okay, so, so uh, k dimensional representations and, and uh, this this you can get you can get the characters in this k dimensional representation character of R etcetera. Okay, so you can generate the characters of each of the elements, and uh, and, and 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 this will be an irreducible representation. Okay, so this is the th this will be an irreducible representation. now why should this be an irreducible representation it's not it's not uh, it's not immediately obvious why this should be an irreducible representation but in fact if you if you look at it more closely you can show that uh, this since uh, since you have k fold degenerate states okay so the and the and the k k eigen functions are chosen to be orthonormal to each other okay then you can show that this will indeed form an irreducible representation so let's take a specific example of this we look at the 
we will look at the at uh, at the NH th NH 3 molecule. So, the NH 3 molecule ok. So, this is a this belongs to group C 3 V ok. This has one uh, C 3 axis. So, this is a C 3 axis ok and there are 3 sigma planes containing the containing the C 3 axis and one of the hydrogen. So, the so the elements of the group are E 2 C 3 and 3 sigma 3 sigma V ok. So, there are 3 3 sigma V's ok 3 sigma V planes and uh, and 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 uh, you can you can easily work out since the since the dimension of the group is 6 you can easily work out that there have to be there have to be 3 representations ok. The so, there will be the, the completely symmetric representation then there will be one with this and there will be a two dimensional representation. So, it will be 2 minus 1 0 ok. So, that is the that can be worked out fairly easily ok. Now, uh, now what we will show is that uh, is that uh, our p x 2 p x and 2 p y or uh, Eigen functions. can be a basis for for this irreducible representation for two dimensional irreducible representation ok. To show this what we will what we will say uh, we have to set up our coordinate system. So, we will choose this as the z axis ok this and it will be it will be centered as the at the center of this of this uh, it will be it will be centered on the nitrogen ok. So, the origin will be on the nitrogen this is the x this is the y ok and we will choose it. So, that one of the hydrogens lies in the x z plane ok. So, one of the so nitrogen is at the center one of the hydrogens is in the x z plane ok. The other two hydrogens are somewhere else ok and the z axis is the c 3 axis. So, then any arbitrary any arbitrary point ok you, you can have a polar representation r theta phi ok where theta is this angle phi is this angle ok r theta phi. And now in this polar representation your uh, psi of 2 p x ok your 2 p x wave function is uh, is equal to a radial part psi r times cos phi sin theta ok. So, the angular part is cos phi times sin, sin theta ok and uh, the 2 p y will be a radial part times sin phi sin theta ok. So, 2 p x and 2 p y will have will have this uh, this form where we would not bother about the about the pre factor of psi of r because uh, what we will what we will see is that 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 would not be affected. So, any symmetry operation will not change r. So, we are not bothered about the r part. Now, uh, each of these operations so, E C 3 and sigma v ok if you notice if you do a C 3 rotation ok if you do a C 3 rotation this point will rotate, but this angle theta with the z axis will not change ok. So, theta th theta is the uh, theta angle will not change will not change. So, so even if this point rotates here ok the theta theta will be same ok, but the phi phi angle will change as you change this C 3 ok. Similarly, when you take when you reflect about a plane containing the z axis and uh, either the uh, when one of the hydrogen atoms again you will find that theta is not changed ok. So, theta is unaffected by symmetry operations. operations ok. Now, when you rotate when you when you operate by C 3 ok. So, C 3 takes phi to phi plus 2 pi by 3 ok. So, C 3 is rotation about the z axis. So, this angle phi will change to phi plus 2 pi by 3 
okay and uh, it changes and then sigma sigma v okay and let's let's take for convenience let's take uh, sigma v as the xz plane okay so if you take it as the xz plane when you reflect about this this phi this this h will come on this side so or, or this this phi will become minus phi okay sigma v takes phi to minus phi okay and uh, this is all we need to derive the characters of this irreducible representation so 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 we'll see that in a in a minute okay so let's look at uh, what happens when c3 acts on px 2px so when c3 acts on 2px what you get is uh, so so th phi will be changed to phi plus 2 pi by 3 okay so so you can show this that uh, that this will become psi of r cos phi plus 2 pi by 3 sin theta theta remains the same okay and uh, and if you work this out this will be a combination of cos phi into cos 2 pi by 3 plus sin phi into sin 2 pi by 3 okay so this is psi r so cos phi cos 2 pi by 3 is minus half plus or minus minus sin phi into root 3 by 2 sin 2 pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 okay sin theta okay so this is this is equal to you can so it is minus half p x minus root 3 by 2 p y okay so so uh, so c 3 operating on 2 p x is this okay. c 3 operating on 2 p y okay. this will be root 3 by 2 p x minus half p y. Okay. So, so, so therefore, you can say that c 3 is represented by a matrix the matrix representation of C 3 is minus half minus root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 minus half ok. So, this is a two dimensional matrix representation of C 3 ok implies chi of C 3 is equal to minus 1 ok the trace of this is minus 1 ok. Similarly, you can show that uh, sigma 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 has a representation Okay, uh, sigma will keep uh, will will keep will just change uh, phi to minus phi. Okay, so when phi changes to minus phi, you can see that uh, that two p x remains the same, but two p y changes sign. Okay, so two p x remains the same, and two p y changes sign. So this is the this is sigma, and this implies that chi of sigma equal to zero. Sigma v. So, and since this is a two dimensional representation clearly E is equal to 1 0 0 1 chi of E equal to 2 and so and so what you notice is that 2 minus 1 0 which is the same as the two dimensional representation ok. So, this is an irreducible representation this is a two dimensional irreducible representation of this group ok. So, so, so what we said is that P x and P y form a basis for a two dimensional irreducible representation of this group ok. And, uh, and if you if you remember in this column of the group what you will have is x y ok x and y transform as p x and p y. So, they so they they will be they will form a two dimensional irreducible representation and you also have r x and r y ok. So, this is one of the things in this you you have other things also, but, but uh, this is one of the things and this is what we have shown using this representation ok. So, so, so we can use this uh, we can use the Eigen functions as a uh, to generate a two dimensional irreducible representation of this group.